me see. Oh, yes, I see what I want. May I see the very latest? We, oui, Mister, won't you be seated? Merci. Yes, now, which is your favorite? This. They are all your favorites. Do you favor anything else around here? These. Well, uh, I'll take them all. Where shall I send them? No, I'll take them with me. The cashier is right over there. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Merci beaucoup, mademoiselle. Where's the clothes horse? Oh, that's Mr. Dubois, an old friend of mine. He's nice, isn't he? Why do I get all the cheap streets? My customers flit in, add the price, and flit out again. I'm getting so I can tell a flitter a mile off. Oh, why don't you run and hide? Well, how'd you do, Mr. Dubois? Pardon me. I seem to have lost my way. Could you direct me to the Boulevard Saint-Germain? About a mile, straight ahead. Well, as long as we're going in the same direction. Uh, would you permit me to give you a lift? No, thanks. We live just around the corner. Just around the corner? Five miles away? Come on. Pardon me. You are so lovely and fresh, I'm sure you'll enjoy the air. You know, for the last three nights, I've been watching you go home. A charming girl like you shouldn't have to take streetcars. You must believe in fairy godmothers. Oh, I do. In fact, I think I'd make a fairly good one. <laughs> As a godmother, I find your mustache particularly becoming. <laughs> well, godmothers are out of date anyway. Godfathers are the things nowadays. Really? If I were your godfather, I'd try to fulfill your every wish. If only you would... To the right here, please. <laughs> As I was saying, I'd try to fulfill your every wish if you only would let me. You're very generous. But godfathers, especially those with mustaches, have a way of keeping Cinderella out after 12. Thanks for the ride. Don't mention it. Thanks for the ride. The air was so nice and fresh. But not half as fresh as you. 
<laughs> you know, I'm sorry that you're just round the corner. It wasn't ten miles. Uh, won't you take these with you? They're your favorites, you know. Thanks. I'm sure you won't have any trouble disposing of them. Boulevard Saint-Germain is about three miles that way. Yes. I hope you won't get lost again. Good night. Good night. Madame Pinot? Madame Pinot? Yes? Any mail for me today? Do you see it? No. Well, then there isn't any. Not even a postal card yet, huh? I wonder if something's happened to him. Sure. Something happens to all of them. And if it don't, it ought to. You've got to snap out of it. In love. One of two things happen. You either leave or get left. Couldn't you read between the lines of his last letter? And you know yourself he was cheating plenty while he was here. That's what you get for playing square. Take Jimmy. He gave me the air, didn't he? I tell you, the better you treat him, the worse they like it. I mean, well, you know what I mean. By the big brutes, I'd like to kill them all. Why, you ought to be draped over a stage lounge, watching the world go by from a reserved seat. And you ought to be saying, don't annoy me with these orchids. Look at this broke bummer that drove us home tonight. Didn't I hear him say, I'd try to fulfill your every wish if you'd only let me? Say, so you could have his shirt if you only knew how to unbutton it. Perhaps you're right, Paulette. I just couldn't wait until this evening to see you. I'm always glad to see you. You must have something unusual to tell me. No, uh, not unusual. But there is something. Come on, tell me. If I fix one of your favorites, will you tell me then?
Thank you, dear. I'll bet I know what it is. You want to go to San Marites instead of Nice for our honeymoon. Am I right? On the right track. It concerns our marriage. I value that more than anything in the world. Have you learned a new game? I wouldn't call it exactly new. Let's see some more of it. There isn't any more. It's the end of the game. Everything has to end sometime, you know. I'm afraid you haven't learned the rules of the game. It's a charming game. To the future, Madame Valrain. Aren't you taking a lot for granted? But you promised, if I finished with, uh... Don't tell me you're old-fashioned enough to believe in promises. I believe they should never be broken. And to prove what I say, a pretty little thing. My second gift today. Second? I picked this up this morning at Ravel's. Rather unique, as you'll see by the first of the month. You talk as though I'd been known to refuse you anything you wanted. Do you approve of my taste? Darling, I approve of everything you do, except your delaying our wedding. Let's announce our engagement tonight. If the party gets dull, I might consent to it. Well, I hope it'll be very, very dull. <laughs> you know, it's all I want you to get used to. I used to despise packing. I've even been known to pay my rent to avoid it. Except in the spring when you figure it's easier to move than to clean house. But this mouse trap would get on anybody's nerves. Bet you're glad to get out of it. We won't bother taking those, Paulette. You don't mean those, you mean that. No more tears over him. He's all wet anyhow. Well, we're on our merry way. Cheer up. There's plenty of more fish in the sea. In this gay cabaret. I'm a laughing roué, paid for being what they call gigolette. There are those who may say it's the easiest way, 
But it's all in a day for Gigolette. At least a hundred men fell while you were singing. So I noticed. Even the chandelier almost took a tumble. I would have tumbled myself if I hadn't done it already. you singing more than ever tonight. Thank you. But why do you sing the same song every night? Why not? Don't you like it? It doesn't give us men much of a break. You don't need much of a break. You have been hurt. You are thinking of some particular man. Generalizations are dangerous, you know. Not dangerous. Safe. Ah, 
how could I make a misstep with you guiding me? Like this. That just shows you what practice will do. <laughs> Ow! I, I, I'm sorry, dear. I, I, I'm so very, very I may ask for another one later. Please do. Uh, no, thank you. Would you excuse me for a second? Certainly, but only for a second. like a very interesting evening ahead of you. Not bad, is she? But the start you have, you shouldn't be long finding out. Worried? <laughs> no, Tony. Did you find out who she is? No, Miss Detective. Not sufficiently interested. Did you notice the ring she's wearing? It's exactly like the one I told you about. Remember? Would you like to have it? I can get it for you. How? Silly. Oh, one of several ways. First time I'd ask her as man-to-man -man if she minds my knocking her over the head so I can steal it. What a gruesome mind you have. There is no need for unnecessary violence. I always ask permission before I knock people over the head. <laughs> Did anybody ever refuse? Yes. I, I believe there was a woman in South America once. But she didn't understand French and thought I said something else. What did she think you said? I never found out. She ran home and hid under the bed for three months. <laughs> but this blonde might refuse, too. We'll see. You're very generous. No, Tony. I don't want anything that isn't mine. Suzanne, here is something that is yours, and you won't take it. Watch. Find out who she is, Tony. Somehow I'd like to know. How many seconds have I been? Hours, mademoiselle. Not seconds. And may I regret this? I have only a few more minutes to spend with you. I'm leaving by midnight train for the Riviera. Oh, is it as late as that? What an unusual watch. You like it? The most beautiful watch I've ever seen. Oh, then I wish you would accept it as a little remembrance. Oh, I couldn't think of it. Oh, no. Please. I have quite a collection. I never miss it. If you should, by any chance, come to Monte Carlo within the next few months, you'll find me at the Metropole. Look me up. Or, if you are still here when I return, I hope to see more of you. You carry out, mademoiselle. Is that what's coming up, Kai? Oui, mademoiselle. Yeah, I like it. Bring me an order. But, mademoiselle, this is an order. An order? Oui, mademoiselle. Well, then bring me half a dozen. Yeah, mademoiselle. Hey, wait a minute. Bring us another sample of this. 
What do you see? If I only dare say. Please tell me. I see that uh, you are married. And uh, have a very generous husband. Be serious. Uh, this line shows great strength of character. Why do all fortune tellers begin with strength of character? They have to begin with something. All right, tell me about my love life. I was just coming to that. I see that at the age of four... Four? Yes, four. I see that at the age of four... You'd better begin with 24. I'm reading the present, not the future. Flatter. Great determination. You always get what you go after. How very encouraging. You are very kind-hearted. And generous toward those whom you love. So he don't believe in me yet, huh? Life has taught me not to believe in anyone anymore. Let me prove to you that I am different. I don't believe you realize what I would do. Yes, I know what you would do for me. If. But you misunderstand. There is no if. There is always an if. Will you let me prove to you that today isn't? One is always interested in miracles. Then, shall I call for you tomorrow, say, uh, at two? To tomorrow. Pardon, mademoiselle. You are wanted on the phone. Merci, Paul. Will you pardon me a moment? Mr. Yes, certainly. I have some news for you. Yes? What is it? The lady is Madame Albert Balrain. Balrain. Where is he? He's out of town for a few days. Tony, I want that ring. What? It belongs to me. It was my engagement ring. Oh. So, uh, he's the man. Huh? So, the Count looked at his watch at the wrong time. Yes, the wrong time for him, but the right time for me. And Monsieur Valrain let his wife wander to the right cabaret tonight. Uh, the right one for you, but the wrong one for him. The Count just missed having his heart broken tonight. How's that? I didn't think I should accept his watch, but he would have been broken hearted had I refused. So, I had to take it. You know, Tony, I hate to disappoint men in that respect. I know how it is. Madame Balrain felt the same way about my getting out of the cabaret and going into business. She wanted to finance me. Naturally, I couldn't accept money. Of course not. I had admired her ring. She generously offered it to me. And when I flatly refused, she became persistent. I couldn't disappoint her. And there it is. So Madame Valrain has a very jealous husband. Here is our chance to show him how it feels to be at the losing end of the game. It would be easy. She's already in love with you. Oh, I'm getting sick of it. You know the circumstances that brought me here? 
At first, I didn't think it mattered, but it does. A man can't live this sort of life and retain his self-respect. I've got to get out. I know, Tony. Suzanne, let me take you away from all this. That's impossible now, Tony. I was driven here. And I'll not leave until I have what I came after. People with money can do anything. I'm going to get some of that money. I must have money. To find that when you have it, you haven't anything. It doesn't bring happiness. Perhaps not. But, Tony, you've got to help me. I must show Mr. Velrain that in spite of all his money, there are some things he can't buy. Buy? Buy? Who the heck wants to buy anything? <laughs> Paulette, how do you do it? It's a gift. Yes, we're quite a gifted family. Never miss. Well, it's getting late. I got to run along. So Good long, night. Tony. Good night, dear. I'll call you in the morning. Good night, Tony. Take it as a gift from me. Good night. I'm learning more about men every day. I mean every night. What did you learn tonight? They're just two kinds. Yes? Yeah. They're both alike. Look at this. Haven't I seen that before? I believe you have. It has returned to its rightful owner. From whom? From Madame Albert Valrain. Madame Albert Valrain? Yes. Did you notice the blonde Tony had in tow tonight? How did Valrain ever get her? He didn't get her. She got him. So queen. She certainly is. And Tony got the crown jewel. woo Local boy makes good. <laughs> and you know, Paulette, Something tells me the king is about to be dethroned. Down with the king! <laughs> 35,000 francs. 40,000 francs. 50,000 francs. 90,000 francs. 125,000 francs. This? 75,000 francs. May I see that one? Uh, most assuredly, madame. I like this one very much. And if you like it, it's perfect. <laughs> Will you give me the same guarantee that you gave me on my last purchase? Certainly, madame. Then I'll take it. To whom shall I make out the bill? Suzanne Ricard. Merci. Don't you think, my dear, it would save time and trouble if you get the cash from the bank. It's right next door, you know. It's a splendid idea. Merci, monsieur. Très bien, monsieur. I'll be right back. Have you an exact duplicate of this? Oui, madame. How much is it? 10,000 francs. And 5,000 commission to you. That's 15,000. Leaving me a balance of 60,000 francs. Correct, madame. You only seem to be happy when I'm a half a mile behind you. You would insist upon riding when there's so many other things we could do, especially on the last afternoon before Albert returns. But I... Uh... I thought you liked riding. I do, but there's a time and place for everything. I'll race you to the next turn. Merci beaucoup, madame. Here's your guarantee. 
I hope you'll call soon again, madame. With pleasure. Thank you, madame. What a charming place. You'll find the telephone over there. <laughs> you really thought I wanted to phone? You were very convincing. Don't you believe me now? Believe what? That I am different. After all, the very best of intentions are forgotten when one falls in love. Bell has quite an unusual history. Listen to this. Yes, my great great grandfather here. Mm, uh, here, try it yourself. Pardon me a moment. Certainly. Hello? Well, baby, I'm doing my stuff. Hope the bird takes the hit and moves along. How? Why, I'm busy. Couldn't you make it for luncheon tomorrow? Hey, be careful. You said that the last time. Someday you'll pull it on the same guy twice. No, really, it would be much more convenient tomorrow. Well, I've said my say, and now that I'm wide awake and hungry, I'll scram. No, no. Please don't come now. Hello? Hello? Isn't that the worst luck? Someone coming over? Yes, my cousin. She has a way of popping in at the strangest times. She's so old-fashioned. Uh-huh. So I see. It's a shame to have our afternoon ruined. But won't you stay and meet her? No, thank you. I have a peculiar aversion to cousins. When shall I see you again? You'll find me at the cabaret any time. I hope this is not going to be my only reward. So there was an if. Surely. You didn't expect? No, I didn't expect. If he only knew. So, Monsieur Valrain may honor us with his presence. Well, Madame Valrain will. I'm sure he won't let her out of his sight the first night in second town. Order so perfectly. Won't you attend to it? 
Uh, bring us some hors d'oeuvre and uh, some Chateau Lafitte, 1910. Yeah, monsieur. Don't see what's so attractive about this place. No. Nope. It seems to grow on one. Darling. Your ring. Could you by any chance have left it at home? I, I don't know. Let me think. No, I'm sure I didn't leave it at home. Then you must have lost it on the way. I'll call George and have him look in the car. Well, wait a minute, dear. Let me look in my bag. No, it isn't here. Well, don't worry, dear. We'll find it. I'll telephone George. Excuse me. I'll call you later. An old friend of mine just dropped in. I beg your pardon, but I thought I'd found something that belongs to me. I'm sure you don't mean me. No. Oh, that. I think I found something that belongs to me. Would you mind telling me where you got it? Not at all. But I shouldn't have to tell you. You know who had it last. Yes. My wife. She didn't give it to you. Then why don't you ask her to whom she gave it? What do you mean? <laughs> Men are so absurdly sure of their wives' affection. Before you go, remember, if you start asking questions, you must answer some. And things you might have forgotten, I will remember. Sometimes, people get what is coming to them. Did you get George? No, the line was busy. Anyway, I'm rather convinced it's useless. Never mind, dear. I'll get you the ring you admired so much the other day. Let's hope someone deserving found this one. Let's hope. May I serve now? Yes, please. So that's the attraction here. How can you be so cheap? Humiliating me with a common gigolo. Common is scarcely the word. We won't argue the point. We'll have dinner elsewhere. I prefer to have my dinner here. You may go if you wish. You're not serious. I was never more serious in my life. Dion, if I leave here alone, we're through for good. Albert, my darling, my love. I was through with you before I started. Very well. I expected some unusual entertainment tonight. He certainly got it. Go over to her so she won't weaken. She's not the weakening type. You never know. I want to show him what it means to have his place taken by someone else. This has gone far enough. Suzanne, please, let's leave this place tonight for good. I'm sorry, Tony. I can't go yet. You've got to make up your mind to go with me now, or stay here alone. Then for the present, I'll stay here alone. Suzanne, you don't mean that. I do.
you by any chance tired of this place? I certainly am. So am I. Let's get out. Good. Oh, it's been a delightful evening, hasn't it? Where are we going now, darling? I'm taking you home. Who's home? Yours, of course. But tell me that's impossible. Why? I'm through with Albert. I'm never going back. Because he left the cabaret? Diane, be sensible. By morning, he'll have forgotten all about it. Tell me I'm not going back. Very well. I will drop you off at a hotel. But tell me. Diane, you came into the cabaret looking for adventure. I was a gigolo. But now I'm through with that sort of life. I'm sorry if I've hurt you. Oh, really? You're in love with that girl at the cabaret. I am. Drop me off at the Creon. I'll return your ring tomorrow. I venture she's wearing it right now. She is. She had a certain right to it. It was hers once. What do you mean? Before you marry Val Rain, she was engaged to it. Oh, I see. That's just like him. It didn't mean anything to me, so you needn't bother to return it. This is the stolen watch we have been looking for. It was left here for repairs, you say? Ah, oui, monsieur. Have you ever seen the man before? I do not recall him, monsieur. When is he supposed to call for it? Sometime this afternoon. What was the trouble with it? Just needed cleaning. How much? 35 francs. Oh, see, monsieur. What's this? Sorry, with us. You must be mistaken. Orders are orders. Let's go. Come on. Thanks. I don't care for anything. No one has seen him since he left with that blonde last night. Well, I guess the inevitable has happened. But you've no one to blame but yourself. What did you expect? You keep them together every chance you had. And every man's a weakling. They don't know the rules of the game. I believe you said that to me once. Do you mind another question? Will you please tell me how you got that ring? 
<laughs> Suzanne. I know I've been a fool. Would you ever care for me again? <laughs> it does look as if you might need it again, doesn't it? Zoe, come here. Zoe, this is my last night here. I want you to have this for all your kindness to me. But on one condition, that if you ever give it to anyone, you will never take it away again. Oh, thank you, mademoiselle. And don't worry, the one I have in mind never gives back anything. Thank you. So it was given to you, and you won't say by whom? No. And you refuse to identify yourself? That's right. And you still want us to believe you're innocent? An innocent man is not afraid to talk. A friend gave it to me. She's as innocent as I am, and I won't have her implicated. Take him away. I always know what they're going to do. But Tony certainly fooled me. Well, he's just another one to forget. And the only way to do it is remember someone else. You've got plenty of numbers. Listen, no man is worth a nickel. But if you get enough of them together, they amount to quite a lot. Why don't you give Henry a jingle? He's been looking for a heartache for months. Paulette, I've been such a fool. I really love Tony. Oh, cheer up, darling. He'll come back. I can't stand this place any longer. Let's go away for a while. Where would you like to go? Oh, any place where it's quiet, where there aren't any people around. Wouldn't that be something? You could sit and watch the grass wave in the breeze all day and cry about your broken heart. Oh, darling. I know you feel terrible, but you need noise, people, things like that. Let's go to Monte Carlo. We've plenty of friends there.
Bonjour, madame. A table for two. Thank you. I'll wait until my husband comes down. Yeah, madame. Fine morning, dear, isn't it? Delightful. <laughs> Have you ordered? No, I've been waiting for you. Oh, I see. I'm afraid things will go pretty badly for you. You've refused to help us by talking, so we found out a few things for ourselves. Your name is Antoine Ferrand, age 26, born in Lyon, son of Charles Ferrand, a wealthy silk manufacturer. You left home after a misunderstanding with your father about entering his business. We also know that you have an accomplice, a woman. Yes, there is a woman. But I repeat again, she's as innocent as I am. I won't have her drawn into this. If you're innocent, you could help us by giving us the information about this watch, which might lead to the arrest of the guilty person. On the other hand, people have been convicted on circumstantial evidence. You admit that what I told you about yourself is true? Yes, I admit that. But I refuse to say another word until I have consulted an attorney. Well, that's your privilege. Have you ever seen this person? Why, yes. He looks like the man that gave the watch to my friend. Well, since you're willing to help us, I'll try and make things as easy for you as possible. I could recommend an attorney to you with the suggestion that you follow the advice given. Thank you, Inspector. Tony. Suzanne. Tony, I told them everything. She identified this criminal. And with her testimony, we'll be able to convict one of the shrewdest we've ever had to deal with. We suspected him and have had him under surveillance. He was arrested yesterday in Marseille and made a full confession. You're free to go. Thanks, Inspector. Darling, and I thought you'd run away with... I have been wanting to run away with you for a long time. But you try to turn me over to someone else. I think we'd better run home. Dad was right. From now on, I'm going to help him make silk. Now that I have someone to wear it. My size is 34, size 8 stocking. Favorite colors are red, black, brown, green, yellow, and white. And don't forget my address. Since you're going to leave me, I might as well confess. Louie and I beat you to it. Thank you.